The Nikon Z6, why would you get it? Is it any fun? And will it change my photography? I have to mention that this is not gonna be like an in-depth review of the Nikon Z6. It's more like a video, I have the camera for a week and how does it feel? So why would I get a Nikon Z6? Even after my last video, which was about basically, do you need mirrorless? And I thought like, no, I don't get a mirrorless in the close future. Now Nikon's DSLRs are really good. Their F-mount produces really superb photos. Why would we need anything more? I'm not a person that is interested particularly in IAF and such a thing, so I could get a Sony if I was really interested and that was the only reason why I need a new camera. In photography it doesn't come just down to quality, it also comes down to quality of life. And a light camera, especially when you do auto stuff like I do, can make your life so much easier and change your photography actually. The Z cameras are light and with that I hope that some of these tours and hikes get easier and more footage and more fun out of it. Doesn't mean the quality of my photos will be better. As well I want that slow motion, not only for wildlife but also for me and 120 frames per second. I want that 4K so that I can zoom into a wildlife film without losing quality. Next thing goes out to everyone that tried to film with a DSLR on the live view filming wildlife. It's really a pain and I think it's so much greater with the mirrorless cameras that we can now look through the electronic viewfinder and we can see way better what we're focusing and what we're filming and that's one of the major points that made this decision for me. If you see yourself in any of these reasons to switch maybe to a mirrorless camera from Nikon because you already have existing glass then let me know down below in the comments because I think that's really interesting and I think my reasons are really legit because I have a good stills camera, but this is just something else. One argument that really struck me is you will not take any photos with the camera that you're waiting for and that's maybe a Z8 or Z9 that I would really prefer maybe but with the camera that you have you will take so many more photos than with a camera you don't have or you're waiting for. So that's that really struck me and that's really a reason for me. And this counts for video. For me. Is the Z6 fun to use? And this question is more important for me than specs or anything else. A camera has to perform well in my hand. And it does feel really good. Many people think maybe it's a mirrorless camera and way too small for my hands. I think the Nikon Z6 does really well in this. It fits my hands as good as with its grip as the D750. It's as deep, just the body where the mount is, is way thinner. It feels good. It sounds really good. The shutter is... I, I just love it. And in general the buttons are where they should be and where they have to be. So handling is a lot of fun. I tested it so far in a few different situations. First of all filming and I did a video where I wanted to fill, uh, take photos of the sea, do some seascapes. I'm also trying out my new camera. It didn't work out that great, it was just raining too much. Uh, the weather ceiling worked really well, the camera is totally fine. At some point I could just not film or take photos anymore because I had too much water on my lens front element. And I'm surprised that this camera can still see something because there's a lot of water on the lens. I don't think the camera has any problems but yeah it just drops on the lens. And you can't do much about that but the camera is Nikon. Good job, really weather sealed. I can see that it focuses my face right. I don't have to do just manual focus anymore which is really a relief. It just finds my face and it did so until the lens was nearly completely full with water. So it did a great job there and it was light in my hand so it was easy to walk around and just made my life easier. And that's the quality of life I'm talking about. It's fun to use because it makes my life easier. Not because it's particularly that much better in image quality. Which it is I think. So that video maybe didn't turn out, but it showed me that I did the right decision with the Nikon Z6 for video. It was fun even though the weather was miserable. Another thing the Nikon Z is really made for is low light and I went out with my girlfriend Anne in the city to shoot a bit like at the end of the day when the sun was setting and when the Christmas lights were still on to just play around a bit with the camera and also test the IAF. 
the IAF worked really good when it was not too dark. Then I went over to using uh, the joystick. I tested the low light autofocus, but I was not too impressed so far, but I don't have the latest firmware. I don't think they changed really something about autofocus, but maybe they did. I don't know. I think this will develop further and further on. It was still really fun to use. I got all the shots and I think the photos look really good directly out of camera in these situations. Once the IAF went onto Anne's eyes, of course, how it should, how it did all the time once. It did it only once. No, it did it nearly all the time. But she had a hair in front of her eyes that made the photo really soft. And I actually like that more than nearly all of the other photos I took that night, that evening. Which makes me think about our lenses are already sharp enough. And I did that with the Sigma 50mm f1.4. Works really great on the Z lenses, uh, cameras. I really had fun using this camera for the first time and it felt so much yeah, like a relief. It's so light in the hands. I came home, lifted my D750 with the 24 to 70 f 2.8. It's not direct comparison, but oh god, that's heavy. I'm having a lot of fun with this one. <laughs> There's this one thing which is really fun, which is that if you watch through the electronic viewfinder and you look at your photos, it's like these small boxes you maybe had as a kid, which were like formed like a camera and you could like click through and would see different photos. I just love that. It's like looking through kids eyes again and makes photography really fun. I didn't go on an outer trip or a hike yet, but I think it will make it way more fun and easier to just record and snap on the run. I'm really looking forward to testing this out. Before I get into the last question, I want to ask some questions in between. What could they change and what works? As I talked about, I used the Sigma Art 50mm f1.4 and it's superb. I mean, it's a great lens in itself and it works on the Z camera perfectly. I have no problems using it. Also not the 12 to 24 art lens. Everything works great there. Tamron, my Tamron doesn't work yet. I have to see into that how I can fix this. The only problem with Sigma lenses and old F mount is in video, they make noise because they don't need that silent focus. They didn't need that because they were mainly for photo. So that's a bit annoying, so you maybe have to record with another microphone or something when you use them. People talk about back focusing in IAF, in the wide IAF mode with this camera. And for me that's a lot of whining. It's so easy when the camera does this to just turn the focus ring a bit, and I think some software updates will solve the problem even more. But Cameras just do that from time to time, I think, and it's so easy to get out of this situation. Just turn your focus ring and the problem is solved. I had no big issues with that. Maybe did it two, three times. I think that's not an issue. Get over it. People have to remember that a camera is way more than just autofocus. The second card slot missing, yeah. That's a bigger issue also for me because I think for a professional reason it's really good to have two card slots. But I think also that SD cards made us really paranoid. People were working back then with film, they didn't have a backup. Now we have this one card slot and it doesn't take cheap SD cards anymore. It takes really expensive XQD cards, but they're really good. And I trust them so far with my one week experience. No, they just look really legit. And based on that the Z6 gets raw output for video, we need CF Express cards and those will be the same fit as the XQD cards. I think it's really good that they put the option in there that you can actually film raw footage with this camera. Because some people might need that, some people want to start out in this, and this camera is your chance to do it on a relatively small budget. The decision to take an XQD card slot or a CF Express slot is really good because these cards are just better. They may be really expensive, but the more people use them, the more common it gets, the cheaper they get. That's simply the case. Maybe it would have been good to have an SD card slot at least as a backup for the people that really were looking for that and that work professionally and I can understand. It would have been a good decision. So maybe the most important question and the most we can debate about, will this camera change my photography? And a lot of people will say, it's the photographer behind the camera and I totally agree, but a camera can change your quality of life. Over the last years I got a bit more serious with the landscape photography aspect and uh, with the wildlife and 
you always shoot raw and you normally always edit. But it kind of loses that feel of just going and snapping photos. Well, you look what you really get into the frame, but you don't really think what you can later make out of it. You want to catch the moment. And I got a bit lost with this big DSLR camera. This mirrorless camera, the Z6, is really light and it's small and it's more snappy. And it's, I think, a really good arounder. I just go around with it so far and I like it. I have custom settings and I set one only for snapping and only shooting JPEG, for example. I don't want to edit those photos, I want the moment. So I think that will change my photography. I just think that will make it more fun again, get back to the basics, the roots of how I started photography when I got my first smaller half mirror DSLR. And a lot of people discuss if Nikon is doing it right with affordable lenses, only f1.8, not so much for professional shooters right now. But I think they do it right and it's a good all-rounder. Because the lenses already perform good and it's affordable for an average user, maybe a bit expensive but it's more affordable than other F-mount lenses that are still out there. And I think that's a good option that you have this decision between lighter lenses in the Z-mount lineup and heavier lenses that can do more. Often when I go out and shoot landscapes, I don't need F2.8. It's nice that I can just put this lens on, which is F4, small and collapses when packed, and it makes my life easier. That's why I think Nikon is on the right way also putting in CF Express, that's the future, and they're bringing better lenses. Just wait for it, the glass is gonna come. It's gonna happen. They can't build it. They've done it before. Are you thinking about upgrading in 2020? Do you think about getting a hybrid camera? Let me know down below, it doesn't matter which brand, you have your reasons, and make sure you have good reasons to change. If you really want video, for example, if you really need IAF, Maybe your photography is already amazing and doesn't need the upgrade. Think good about it. I would be glad if you like, subscribe or comment on this video and also check out my other video about my five best shots about 2019. If you like one of them, write me a comment which one. I will give away one of those printed. Last thing to say, have a nice week, nice weekend. I hope you have great fun with your photography and bye. change my photography. Of course. The Nikon Z6.